surging number of threats being made against school. Our school officials and police are tr cracking down on these threats and holding people accountable. Coming up, you're watching 4 News Now at 6. Well, good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Derek Dice. Kirsten O'Connor has the night off. We want to send things right over to Chief Meteorologist Chris Crocker for a look at that first alert forecast as things start to cool down and the rain gets ready to come back. Uh, yes, first we head into a cold night. This is a live look over the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. It is uh, put an extra blanket on the bed kind of weather. 45 degrees right now in Spokane and with those clear skies, light winds, dry air, we are going to cool down quickly. We have a few clouds drifting through overnight that may keep our temperatures from dropping too far into the 20s, but right now our Friday morning lows are looking like some of the coolest readings of the season so far. Many locations dropping into the 20s for the first time this season. 24 in Deer Park, just 25, Nine Mile, Mead, and Spirit Lake tomorrow morning, and 28 in Spangle, 29 in downtown Spokane, as well as Hayden and Coeur d'Alene, but below freezing throughout the entire Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. A wider view had to break out the teens for Colville for tomorrow morning. Uh, below freezing just about everywhere. Kellogg, Lewiston, the Tri-Cities, a few of the exceptions also staying above freezing in Grand Coulee and Wenatchee, but we'll be in the 20s in many locations, including Sandpoint and Bonners Ferry. Hour by hour, we'll still be in the 20s at 7 o'clock, leaving for school at 32 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Winds generally light throughout the day tomorrow. We'll be in the 40s by 11 o'clock with those light winds in and out of the clouds, especially in the afternoon. You may find more clouds than sunshine. But after a couple of days with highs in the 40s, we're back up into the 50s. In fact, the mid-50s uh, as we get into the afternoon, 4 o'clock. 56, 5 o'clock, 56 with mostly cloudy skies. It's going to get even warmer for Saturday, but we're also going to start bringing in that wet weather this weekend. I'll go over the timing with you in just a few minutes. Derek? That's good, Chris. Thank you. Well, this election, Spokane voters are deciding whether or not to raise the city's sales tax by one-tenth of one percent for community safety initiatives. The majority of the funding will go towards Spokane Police and Spokane Fire. Marissa Rio sat down with both the police chief and the fire chief and asked how exactly this funding would make our community safer. If passed, Proposition 1 would bring back our traffic safety unit and seven neighborhood resource officers. We're allocating these resources um, through data-driven, science-informed um, um, strategies, uh, then we can impact crime at a much greater rate than, than simply sprinkling, uh, you know, officer dust around and saying, go forth and conquer. If it's focused and targeted to certain behaviors in certain locations that we know drive crime, then it's going to drive the crime numbers down. Council member Jonathan Bingle has argued that increasing police officers won't do much good if there's no room in the jail to place people who have been arrested. Chief Hall believes otherwise. Uh, Post-COVID, post-George Floyd world, we have to look for alternatives to how we address problems, both crime uh, problems and social problems like uh, substance misuse or substance use, um, homelessness and behavioral health. Now, some of that money would also be going towards Spokane Fire. I just spoke with Spokane Fire Chief Julie Oberg, and she says a lot of that money would be used so that Spokane Fire can purchase new engines. As you can see right behind me here, engine number 16 is currently in the shop for technical issues. Now, this engine has been used on the front lines since 2009. In a perfect world, Chief Oberg says engine 16 wouldn't even be used as a backup anymore. We have had over the last couple of years some brush trucks that we've had to have towed back into the city because of mechanical failures. Um, we have not had in any recent history uh, an issue of a fire engine or fire truck failing on the way to a call, but those are not odds that, uh, that, that I want to rely on just from a being lucky standpoint. That's why Chief Oberg says updated equipment is needed. In Spokane, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. Well, a recent survey among registered voters living in Spokane highlighted what areas voters want to allocate funding. This was from The Pulse, a survey launched by Greater Spokane Incorporated. Funding was amongst several pressing topics in our region. Mary Sheridan is live from our Sky Deck, where she discussed the issue of public safety with people today. Mary. 
That's right, Derek. And public safety is an issue that's important to a lot of people and an area where people see a lot of room for improvement. I think Spokane has the potential to be a really great place where people could feel safe all the time. I wish I knew the solutions to the problems, which I don't, but... It, there's a lot of potential. This is one Spokane resident's response to a new survey that showed a majority of registered Spokane voters felt less safe in their city than they did two years ago, pointing mainly to homeless encampments and property crime. 93% of those surveyed thought downtown safety will not recover unless homelessness is addressed, specifically by funding mental health and substance abuse facilities. Less homeless people build a shelter or something, put, put them somewhere they, they can... There's a homeless guy sleeping over there in the park right now. One man I spoke to today said he thinks Spokane is a safe place to live, despite how others may perceive it. There are homeless people downtown, and that might make people feel uncomfortable. But, but the crime rates are actually down. Uh, so I think it's more a matter of, of perception than reality. Feehan has lived in Spokane for over 50 years and did not respond to this new survey. This survey consisted of 600 registered voters, which in relation to the total number of registered voters in Spokane County represents 0.16%. And the results of this survey are gaining attention from city council members. City Councilman uh, Jonathan Bingle responded in a statement today urging for more policies that support small businesses. And I spoke to one small business owner today who said he wasn't familiar with this survey, but said he would benefit from more support in the area. Now, the next installment of this data is going to be coming sometime in the spring of next year. Reporting on the Sky Deck in Spokane, Mary Sheridan, 4 News Now. All right, and you can find more about that on our website, kxly.com. Well, Spokane Fire Engine 1 is one of the busiest fire engines in the state. It's something Senator Maria Cantwell says stems from the fentanyl crisis in our region. A typical fire engine responds to about 2,000 calls per year. This year, Spokane Fire Engine 1 is on pace to respond to 6,500 calls. Senator Cantwell introduced a new bill with hopes of giving first responders better tools in the fight against fentanyl. The legislation would fund and create new technology to detect fentanyl in a non-invasive way, like using fentanyl-sniffing canines and devices which could detect fentanyl vapors. It's something that received bipartisan support from city leaders this afternoon. The city of Spokane cannot... Um, appropriately address this crisis on our own. We need these regional partnerships. It is not a complete solution, but it is a significant start in the right direction to us getting on top of this fentanyl education. And the hope is this would give law enforcement funding for these tools to crack down on fentanyl smuggling. They're also working to secure $3 million for the Spokane Regional Stabilization Center to expand services for people struggling with addiction. The bill is still in the early stages. A partially built home was burned down because of arson Sunday night. And the Coeur d'Alene Fire Department wants to find out who did it. So it's offering a $5,000 reward for any information that could lead to an arrest. Derek Strom spoke with the fire department and neighbors who saw the fire. Anytime you have crime that occurs this close to your home of that magnitude, of course it's going to be alarming. Neighbors that live near Bastion Loop and Coeur d'Alene say they were able to see the fire that burned this home down from their backyards. Many of them never expected something like that to happen, especially to a home that was still being built. Some were surprised to hear it was caused by arson. I'm, I'm concerned for the, the elderly people that live in this area. I'm sure they're very alarmed. Um, I, I spent a career in law enforcement, so it's, it's not new to me, that type of a, an incident. But The Coeur d'Alene Fire Department is still investigating the arson, but many of the homes nearby are still being built or unoccupied, so it's asking the public for help to find who did it. Was it somebody who, you know, didn't like the owner, didn't like the builder, didn't like construction in Idaho, you know, any of those things? Coeur d'Alene Fire says it's looking for anyone with cell phone video, doorbell camera video, or anyone that just happened to be walking through the neighborhood around the time of this fire to help them with their investigation. It wasn't too terribly late into the night when the, when the fire occurred. Um, so we know people may have, may have been out, you know, walking dogs or playing with the kids or, uh, and they just may have, may have seen something. 
The Coeur d'Alene Fire Department and the Idaho Fire Marshal's Office are offering a $5,000 reward for any information that could help the investigation. The number is one eight seven 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 five arson and Deputy Fire Marshal Craig Etherton encourages anyone to call with any information. In Coeur d'Alene, Derek Strom, 4 News Now. All right, new affordable housing just went up in Airway Heights. We were there for the ribbon-cutting ceremony today as more than 60 families get ready to move in. That story is coming up right after the break. Download the KXLY Plus app on your connected TV. Save your creed. As a U.S. Navy veteran, I fought for our freedom and our right to vote. But today, independent voters can't vote in the elections I fought to protect. Over 275,000 Idahoans, including thousands of veterans, are blocked from voting in our primary elections, all because they were closed by party insiders and special interests. Proposition 1 respects veterans like me by opening Idaho's primaries, ensuring every Idaho taxpayer has the right to vote. That's what I fought for, and that's how it ought to be. Jorge has always put the ones he loves first. But when it comes to caring for his teeth, he's let his own maintenance take a back seat. Well, maybe it's time to shift gears on that. Aspen Dental has complete affordable care all under one roof. Plus $29 exams and x-rays for new patients without insurance. And 20% off treatment plans for everyone. Making it easier to get started with quality care. It's one more way Aspen Dental is in your corner. What's all this? You said it was a recovery day. I got my yoga mat, foam roller, electrolytes, and protein bars. The whole setup. <laughs> refrigerant recovery, Ben. We're recovering the refrigerant to fix the heat pump. Oh, right. I knew that. Want a protein bar? Get a free heat pump with every furnace purchase at Bill's Heating and AC while supplies last. Call now. Electrolyte? Ben, take the robe off. I grew up in eastern Washington, and it's where my parents have retired, and it's where my wife and I are raising our family. I'm Michael Baumgartner, and in Congress, I'll work for your family by protecting Social Security and Medicare, ensuring veterans get the benefits they've earned, fighting the inflation that hurts so many seniors, single moms, and young people, and I'll work hard to make our neighborhoods safe by securing the southern border and stopping the fentanyl pouring into the country. I'm Michael Baumgartner, and I approve this message. Well, more than 60 families are getting ready to move into new affordable housing units in Airway Heights. This comes after the completion of Phase 2 of the Highland Village development. Our Alexander Cohen Yards was at the ribbon cutting for the new homes and shares how this project helps address the affordable housing crisis in Spokane. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Monster Jam at the Spokane Arena November 8th through the 10th. In celebration of Veterans Day, 4 News Now and BECU would like to honor those who served our country. Go to KXLY.com, submit a photo and a short write-up on a veteran or military member. 4 News Now, honoring our heroes. Brought to you by BECU. Greetings, Bill and I here. Reading this is easy, right? Your brain is actually doing something called orthographic processing, recognizing letters and words. It's science. But take a look at Initiative 2117. It's written to confuse you. The mega millionaires behind it don't want you to know it will mean more air pollution, threaten clean water, and put our health at risk. You don't have to be a science guy to know that 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. Elegance, style, quality, custom made for your project. Agalite shower doors and bath enclosures by River City Glass are designed for a lifetime of use. Timeless beauty that speaks for itself with superior quality and exceptional value. 
offering exquisite custom wine room enclosures and office room glass, specializing in custom mirrors crafted to fit your space, producing high-performance glass for every project, residential and commercial. River City Glass. I'm a real wild one. Life is wild. There's work to be done. Adventure around every corner. And a truck that handles it all. The new 2024 Ford F-150 Wild Edition. It's rugged. Loaded with tech and built to go wild. Get a wild deal on an F-150 today. Lease a 2024 F-150 SDX 4x4 for just $3.99 a month for 36 months. Only at your local Ford dealer. As County Sheriff, I know Al French is the only candidate who fully supports our local law enforcement. As a mayor of Medical Lake, I'm confident that Al French is the only candidate with a real plan for affordable housing and clean drinking water. As the mayor of Airway Heights, I trust that Al French is the only candidate that will keep taxes low and support small businesses. I trust Al to make our community safer. And good paying jobs. And to keep Spokane County affordable. I'm Al French and I'm running to get results for you. Well, we apologize for our technical difficulties. As we were telling you, more than 60 families are getting ready to move into new affordable housing units in Airway Heights. This comes after the completion of Phase 2 of the Highland Village development. Our Alexander Cohen Yards was at the ribbon cutting for the new homes and shares how this project helps address the affordable housing crisis in Spokane. This is the site of Jen Jared walking into her new home. Definitely a dream come true um, for my family. Jared is a single mother of three. Her family lives off just her income. This has made it so that she often has to choose between working or spending time with her kids. Now I can spend time with my family and still have a home, so super important for me. Um, I can't wait to be able to move in. Highland Village comes from the efforts of multiple organizations. This initiative hopes to make rental and homeownership opportunities for individuals and families with lower incomes. Those who live there must qualify and meet income guidelines. We need workforce housing. We need people to be, you know, they don't need to drive three counties away just to go to a job every day. We need to build this supply. And this is just such a great example of really great projects. Michael Gardner is one of the homeowners who moved into an apartment complex during phase one. He was in need of a home after getting injured and losing his job while still having to pay for for his newborn son's medical bills. Gardner is excited for how this initiative will help other families. It's amazing. They all get the option that I had to be able to build themselves up and bring themselves from the ground back up. The project brings different types of units. Down the road, there's 51 apartment homes that were built. And next to me, you can see the 16 single family unit homes that were built as well. Those moving in tell me that they're ecstatic to move into this next stage of their life. Something that you guys are like counting down to? Oh, yeah, definitely counting down. That's awesome. They probably have timers. They ask me every day. <laughs> Luckily for Jared, that day is now only two weeks away. Other families will continue to move in through the winter months. In Airway Heights, Alexander Conyarts, 4 News Now. What a blessing for all those families, especially as we're starting to get colder and colder as fall carries on. Cause. That's right. I noticed they didn't have a whole lot of trees yet to rake. Enjoy <laughs> that while it lasts, families, because uh, those trees will grow fast. And uh, likely many of you have some raking to do, and I'm going to explain when the best time to get that done will be. We are going to be dry on Friday and warmer. We've had a couple of days in the 40s. We're heading up into the 50s. Showers possible on Saturday, but the closer we get to Saturday, the less likely those showers uh, look to me. I, maybe a sprinkle or two in the morning, and then the rain will hold off until Sunday, and then we get into a cool and wet week next week. Here's our forecast radar starting off at our current time with clear skies, temperatures dropping. We will see some clouds drifting through overnight. That will keep our temperatures from really plummeting. We're still heading down into the 20s in many locations. 8 o'clock Friday, a mix of sun and clouds, and we'll be in and out of the clouds throughout the day. Here's 6 o'clock Friday evening. Then Friday morning, we have this one little band of light precipitation coming through at 4 a.m. Once that moves off, we are mostly done with the rain. Might even see some sunshine on Friday or Saturday. Here's Saturday at 6 o'clock. But then we have more wet weather coming in on Sunday and a much better chance of rain, up to 90% chance of measurable rain in Spokane on Sunday. 
Still a good chance of rain Monday, and then that tapers off for a break on Tuesday before our next round of wet weather comes in on Wednesday. Meanwhile, even though we are going to see some wetter weather, it's going to come along with some warmer weather. 56 Friday, and we're up to 63 on Saturday. That's that southwesterly flow in advance of the approaching cold front. We're dropped at back down into the lower 50s on Sunday, which is still a degree above average. And then we're down in the 40s through the rest of the seven-day forecast into, well, Halloween 44. We've had much colder Halloweens. 44 is not so bad. Tomorrow, though, enjoy those 50s. 56 in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We'll be in the 60s in Lewiston and St. Mary's. 52 in Bonners Ferry and Sandpoint. Have to go over to Kalispell to find the 40s. Temperatures right now are in the 40s, and we've actually already dropped down to 36 in Deer Park. So it is going to be a cold start to the day tomorrow before we warm up into the mid-50s. 38 to start the day Saturday with that high of 63. And check back. You, we may even see this number drop. I'm really losing confidence that we're going to see any precipitation until possibly late, late Saturday night into Sunday. Monday, chance of rain, a little bit of a break Tuesday with more wet weather next week. And that is going to come along with some mountain snow. Halloween, right now a 50% chance of rain. Uh, hopefully the timing on that will work out in trick-or-treaters' favor. Derek? All right, we sure hope so. Well, factory workers at Boeing have yet again voted no to a contract proposal. How much money the strike has caused the company and what's expected to happen next here on 4 News Now at 6. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. I spent my career in law enforcement the last years as police chief. When it comes to keeping Washington safe, I trust Bob Ferguson. Bob's top priority is public safety. His plan to hire more police officers is exactly what we need. He'll create a statewide response unit to tackle the fentanyl crisis. And he'll put the billion dollars he won from drug companies into treatment. To help us protect Washington, I trust Bob Ferguson. Bob Ferguson for governor. It's time for 4 News Now, Coats for Kids. Drop off new or gently used coats at any of our sponsored locations. We'll bring them to Allsco for professional cleaning, then get them out to local children in need. Donate Coats for Kids through October 31st. SDCU is kicking off Coats for Kids with a fun competition. Ready, set, go! <laughs> We'll donate as many coats as our brave volunteers can layer in one minute. Donate your coats at any STCU branch through the month of October. We have an important choice to make for Lance Commissioner. King County Councilman Dave Upthegrove presided over 30 million gallons of raw sewage dumped into the sound. Year after year, beaches closed, shellfish poisoned, a tribal lawsuit threatened, costing taxpayers millions. There's a better choice. Jamie Herrera Butler is a bipartisan leader who protected endangered salmon and is fighting for sustainable timber harvests to prevent wildfires. Vote Jamie Herrera Butler. She'll protect our environment and our tax dollars. BECU and 4 News Now are teaming up for the Great American Flag Swap. On November 8th, bring your old tattered flag to BECU, and in exchange, you'll receive a new flag with help from Uncle Sam's flag and gift. This November, let's thank veterans and military families who are serving. BECU is proud to be part of the Great American Flag Swap. We're honored to live in a community that supports veterans and military families who sacrifice for the benefit of us all. Visit us in Spokane and see what banking is like when people come first. BECU, not for profit, equals more for people. 35 years ago, I started going to Planned Parenthood. They help Washington women with pregnancy care, birth control, even cancer screening. But Dave Reichert tried to jeopardize that care. Reichert has voted repeatedly to defund Planned Parenthood. It's part of Reichert's years-long record, trying to ban abortion nationwide, including here in Washington. No politician should ever tell me that I don't have a right to make a decision regarding my body. Dave Reichert is wrong for governor. 4 News Now is brought to you by the Cal Superstore in Airway Heights. 
Well, Boeing factory workers have once again rejected a contract proposal that would have ended their strike, which has already dragged on for more than a month and cost the company about a billion dollars. Boeing now announcing it plans to cut 10% of its workforce according to S&P Global Ratings. Here's ABC's Allison Kosick with continuing coverage. Boeing machinists rejected the company's latest contract proposal, extending a strike now stretching into its sixth week. I think it's a contract. <laughs> Excuse my French. Um, I think uh, the contract falls short. 64% of the union's 33,000 workers said no to Boeing's new offer, which included enhanced health and retirement benefits and a 35% pay raise over four years. The biggest aerospace company in the world, we'd like to see better from them. And we deserve better from them. A big sticking point, Boeing did not offer to restore worker pension plans. They need to do something, absolutely, they need to do something about a pension. The vote coming on the same day the aerospace giant reported a quarterly loss of more than $6 billion. And during a time, its new CEO, Kelly Ortberg, is trying to turn things around at the company, which has had years of safety and quality problems. Boeing's CEO saying in a statement, we have been feverishly working to find a solution that works for the company and meets our employees' needs. While warning that when the strike does end, restarting the factories will be tricky, saying it's much harder to turn this on than it is to turn it off. Now, the union will head back to the bargaining table. We have made tremendous gains in this agreement. However, we have not achieved enough to meet our members' demands. As the strike drags on, the company has already announced plans to cut 10% of its workforce. According to S&P Global Ratings, the strike is costing the company about $1 billion a month. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Well, threats made against schools are increasing. And given how frequent school shootings have become in America, threats are putting a strain on our schools and the community as a whole. Coming up in a 4 News Now special report, we're taking a closer look at how this reality is transforming school safety. Plus, the best way you, as a parent or student, can react if you see something alarming. Don't go away. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. This holiday season, believe in the magic of the North Pole. As you set sail for a holiday adventure like no other, marvel over the stunning light display along the magical journey to meet Santa. Experience the magic that only happens on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Even the Grinch can't resist the holiday cheer. Book during Santa's sneak peek week and enjoy 25% off tickets from November 15th to November 27th and discover the magic of the holiday season. Initiative 2124. It's purposely misleading. So here's what you need to know. Independent analysts say if I-2124 passes, it will bankrupt our affordable long-term care benefit, leaving millions of Washingtonians with no options but private insurance that charges way too much and routinely denies coverage to millions with pre-existing conditions. Don't let it happen. Protect your long-term care benefits. Vote no on I-2124. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Get 0% APR on select 2024 Sierra 1500 models. That's over 6400 total value. Plus, no monthly payments until next year. See your local GMC dealer. You wouldn't do that. So why do you do this? Distracted driving kills an average of nine people and injures over a thousand every day in America. Put down your phone. Lives depend on it. Don't drive intoxicated. Don't drive intexticated. A sobering message from AAA. 
Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. Welcome back. It's now just about 6.30. I'm Derek Dice. Kirsten O'Connor has the night off. School shootings happen at an unnerving frequency in America, which has endured at least one fatal school shooting every year over the past quarter century. That's according to multiple sources, including the National Center for Education Statistics and the K-12 School Shooting Database. Meanwhile, schools are being bombarded with another disturbing trend, receiving threats like the one that shut down Ritzville schools just this week. A majority of them are hoaxes, but all of them have to be investigated just to be sure. In a special report tonight, our Jordan Smith takes in an in-depth look at how schools are dealing with these threats and how this reality has transformed our school's safety. Yeah, well, Derek, it's been six weeks since a 14-year-old opened fire at a Georgia high school, killing four people and injuring another nine. But in the weeks that have followed, another trend has begun to surge. Thousands of hoax threats being made on social media to schools across the country, including here. The excitement of a new school year for students has once again been overshadowed by the threat of gun violence. In the last two weeks, police arrested a 12-year-old for bringing a loaded gun to Shaw Middle School, and seven days later, a 14-year-old was arrested for making threats against a teacher and a student at Lind Ritzville High School, mentioning the use of a large caliber rifle and a bomb. You can't really put it in words, though, you know, the things they have to deal with. Aaron Wood serves as North Central's head football coach and the campus safety specialist. Morning, Wendy. He's a liaison 